evening. This is the late report. Well, Boeing machinists recently voted to strike. One proposal to end the impasse was for Boeing to leave Renton, move IKEA up the street, and have the machinists put together that furniture. <laughs> Since it's already more complicated than a 737. A panel of experts has warned that the Seattle Viaduct is in danger of collapsing sometime in the future. When it does, City officials will be amazed that it has happened, and President Bush will wait five days before cutting short his vacation. And now, here with a commentary is our own Pat Cashman. Pat? Thank you. You know, through the years, one of Almost Live's regular mandates was to poke good-natured fun at our towns and our neighborhoods. Most of those places seem to find it at least mildly amusing, with the notable exception of Renton. <laughs> In fact, it gave Renton such a complex that they hired a marketing firm to upgrade their image and implemented the slogan, Renton, ahead of the curve. <laughs> Not a joke, it's true. Well, since then, a lot of other towns have adopted their own slogans. You might be unaware of them, since Almost Live wasn't around to tell you about them. <laughs> Kent adopted Kent, connecting for success. It's really another way of saying Kent. We've seen Renton, we just as soon stay behind the curve. Thank you. <laughs> now, for decades, Bothell has gone with Bothell for a day or a lifetime. It's kind of nice of them to offer a choice like that. Similarly, the city of SeaTac has now adopted SeaTac for an hour or by the day. Yeah. Here are some others. Tacoma, the smell's pretty much gone. Auburn, come for the bowling, stay for the pull tabs. Burien, right next to the airport. Linwood, surprisingly moist. White Center, the best part of an Oreo. Right. We gotta sort of wrap it up, okay? Okay, I got one more for right, you. All right, one more. Hump tulips and pay a two hundred dollar fine. Right, thank you. Pat Cashman, Pat Cashman. The preceding has been a commentary from Pat Cashman. It does not necessarily reflect the views of King TV or of Hump Tulips or Auburn or White Center or Bothell or Renton or Kent. But C Tax cool with it. Now, with some personal reflections, here are our cast members Tracy Conway and Nancy Guppy. You know, from time to time over the years, people have come up to Tracy and myself and asked us, what's it like for you to work for that sexist, male-dominated boys club that is almost live? And did you find that you have to aggressively compete with, compete with each other for the limited opportunities for women? Well, first of all, Nancy and I are good friends. Oh, great friends. Yeah, yes. Yeah. And, and plus, we're really different types, so we usually weren't even going for the same roles. Exactly. For example, Tracy's older and fatter than me, so she was the perfect casting choice for the older, fatter roles like someone's grandma. And Nancy is the scrawny, flat-chested, androgynous, transgender type. <laughs> for roles as younger boys, or unattractive, nondescript, and, you know, mousy women. Also, because well, we've known each other for such a long time, we've been through a lot together in our personal lives. Oh, for sure. I mean, especially in 1995, which is when I had my cardiac arrest. It was How long are you right going to milk that? <laughs> milk that? Nancy, I almost died. We're all gonna die. Get over it! <laughs> By the way, sweetie, how is that chronic frigidity problem of yours? <laughs> Did that female Viagra help at all? Okay, no, I told you that in total confidence. Okay? Yeah, we well, told you. Girls, you want to just... Girls? <laughs> you chauvinist pig! He is such a jerk. Oh, thank God we have each other. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! Don't even look at us. Don't look at us. All right, okay. All right, Jesus. Tracy Conway, Nancy Guppy, ladies and gentlemen. In other news, 
Mary Kay Letourneau has finished her prison sentence for having sex with an underage student. Now that Letourneau has married the student, relieved officials are certain they will never have sex again. <laughs> now with a commentary on uh, the downtown monorail situation, here's Bill Stanton. I'm not, I'm not talking about the monorail. I thought, you were, I thought you were talking about the monorail. John, we changed that like, what, two weeks ago? Oh. Well, I guess I, I missed that. You just so don't pay any attention at all, do you? Yes, I do. No, you don't. Look, okay, all right. Nancy and Tracy were just out here. What was Nancy wearing? A yellow pantsuit. <laughs> okay, fine. Sure. And what was their commentary about? The monorail. <laughs> Why do you even bother coming to the meetings? Well, Tracy brings peanuts. Tracy brings peanuts. That, that is pathetic. No, it's not. I mean, what have you been doing for the past two weeks? Memorizing my lines. <laughs> Memorizing your lines, John. There's nothing to memorize. The whole damn show is on teleprompter. No, it's not. Yes, it is. This exchange that we're having right now is on teleprompter. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Steve, can we get a shot of the prompter? See, look, see? That's the line I'm saying right now. No, it's not. And that was your line. You were reading it straight from the prompter. No, I wasn't. This is exactly what happened six years ago. I, I cannot work with this. Yes, you can. Could you ask Tracy if she could bring more peanuts? Oh, well, this has been The Light Report. Stay with us. We'll be right back.